one day my daughter was at home, I could see how I was behaving and how it was having a profound effect on her. And I said to her at that time, please phone, I've got to go into hospital now. I didn't want to put my family through any more misery, upset, because of something that I was going through. Only that one daughter was at home that day. We had a cuddle and literally she said, Mum, you're not going anywhere. We're going to get through this and we're all going to take care of you. I'm Tina Crowther and I'm 56. Roughly 2009, I'd been working for a good while in a corporate job and things had changed drastically at work and that is what led me to having a breakdown in the end. The job I was doing had targets. There was a sales element involved in it and it was everything that I hated. We were literally stuck to our desks, had to put in certain codes just to have a toilet break and the targets were unrealistic. We were being scrutinised, what I consider to be a high level. I couldn't cope anymore. I couldn't cope with everyday tasks that I'd used to cope with and things were very, very hard. And I would do silly things like the butter would go in the oven. I would make somebody a cup of tea and put sugar in their tea, whereas normally they would never have normally drank sugar in their tea. And it was just silly little bits that started to build up. Um, I eventually went to work one day. I then went to my manager, said to her, I really don't feel at all well, I'm going to go home. And her response to this was, I think you ought to actually. I went home and that's when my illness really developed and from that point it all unfolded very, very quickly and I've never returned. I couldn't go back. Any mail that come from them I couldn't open. Uh, my husband did all of that. My husband contacted work said, please don't phone. I did receive a phone call one day, um, unexpected, and that led to my voice completely shutting down. I couldn't sleep. I'd end up sitting up. I'd claw myself to pieces where my body would just start itching. I'd try to go out, I'd try to go shopping, Going shopping, I had huge panic attacks. I would just start sweating profusely. I would have to get out of wherever I was. And the thought of seeing anybody, I couldn't cope with at all. So that's when I started to self-isolate. And it's frightening, it's very, very frightening when you're not in control of your own feelings. It's a frightening place to be and you feel locked in. Everybody's on the outside and you're suspended in, in time. I've been to see um, counsellors, psychiatrists, 
and I had been told that my next step would actually be to go into hospital, into, it would have been a mental health unit. I was desperate. It is the worst time of my life. One day, my daughter was at home. I could see how I was behaving and how it was having a profound effect on her. And I said to her at that time, please phone, I've got to go into hospital now. I didn't want to put my family through any more misery, upset because of something that I was going through. I didn't think it was fair. We had a cuddle and literally she said, Mum, you're not going anywhere. We're going to get through this and we're all going to take care of you. Lucky enough, I managed to not go into hospital, thanks to them and the support that I've had. Okay, hands back in the pockets, looking towards me, Tina. That's it, hold that. That's it, good. Okay, now moving the shoulder this way for me. That's it, that's lovely. A doctor said to me once about a mobile phone and said, how heavy do you think this mobile phone is? Well, it's not heavy. She then asked, how long could you hold that mobile phone out for in the palm of your hand? Well, I don't know, 20 minutes, it'd start getting a bit heavy. A few hours. Yeah, perhaps some people could hold it for a few hours. Five, six hours, you probably couldn't hold your hand out for five or six hours with this light weight in your hand. And she said, now think about your mind. We all put things into our mind. We put it in, we put more in, we put more in. Unless you clear your mind, at some stage, it's gonna break. When I couldn't sleep at night, I wouldn't sleep at night. It was pointless me laying in bed. I would get up, I'd got a book, and I would just write. All these thoughts and feelings that I had in my head, I would transfer to paper. I found that really useful of lessening the load. If I could put it on a piece of paper, it was out of my head, even if it was only for a little while. What's happened to me in the past is now in a box. The lid's on and I do think about it occasionally, and it makes me sad, but it is in that box and the lid is firmly on. And if you get the correct help, you can recover, as I have. I can't thank my children enough and my husband. They, to me, got me through the worst times. They did everything for me. As a mum, never ever wanted for my children to see me like it. Unfortunately, they did. It shows when you need your family, just how much they actually support you. Um, it wasn't just my children and my husband. By the way, my children were in their 20s when this happened. Um, it's about your extended family. My sister, 
my parents, my friends. They all played a big part in my recovery. And to this day, I still don't think they realise quite what they did for me because at times I was in a desperate place and at times I didn't think I was going to be the mum to them that I had been before um, but I did. couldn't ask for more supportive family or friends and actually I'm working now. I've got a job totally unrelated to what I've ever done before and I'm finally out of the house and getting on with life and not just getting on with life but really enjoying my life again and it's all thanks to a lot of help and support that I've had. I think that's a fantastic place to end it. Is there anything else you want to say? I don't think so. Do you think so? <laughs> oh, I love you too, my darling. More than anything. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, thank you so much oh, for Tom. giving up your time, being vulnerable. Tom, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to tell my story. It's going to help so many people. Well, it really if it will. can help one, that's fine. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> thank you. That's us done. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was okay. Was that all right? Yeah. Absolutely. That was okay. Oh.